All right, it is 201 Eastern time, so I'll get us started. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm excited you're here, and I'm also excited about our guests for today's webinar. I'm Katie Love, and I lead marketing and content here at WorkHound, and I'm so excited to talk to you all today about how you can develop your company's culture story while also increasing your own work capacity and gaining more referrals. Today, you'll meet Kennedy Ruley of Melton Truck Lines and Bobby Leach of Rocket CDL. Kennedy is a workhound and Rocket CDL partner and the digital marketing manager for Melton Truck Lines. Kennedy oversees the company's social media and advertising efforts, and her main duties include managing Melton's online presence, analyzing driver hiring resources, and guiding media creation. She has been at Melton for over four years and has also been involved in driver communications and safety training throughout her tenure. I'm excited you're here to join us today, Kennedy. I'm excited too. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And Bobby Leach is the Director of Customer Success at Rocket CDL, a referrals and incentives software platform built to gamify driver rewards programs and compensate drivers automatically for the things that matter most to trucking organizations like retention, productivity, and safety. With almost 12 years in the transportation industry, Bobby leverages her knowledge to provide solutions for the unique challenges faced at each carrier, as well as advance existing initiatives to create more accessible rewards programs for industry's hardworking drivers. Prior to working at Rocket CDL, Bobby worked at Melton Truck Lines for 10 years, holding an array of positions that included processing and recruiting, driver services, driver, or, um, driver services, advertising, and recruiting supervisor. Thanks so much for sharing your expertise on both sides today, Bobby. Of course. Thank you for having me. Thanks again. So before we get started, I wanted to briefly discuss today's topic and why we're here. What if you could double the effort of your recruiting department daily without doubling your team's headcount? Have you considered scaling your company's recruiting program and how do you do more with less? These are questions that recruiting and HR and retention leaders are asking these days. As recruiting and retaining drivers continually requires more capacity from you and your company, it's time to work smarter, not harder. In today's discussion, we're taking a close look at how Melton Truck Lines is building a culture that drives referrals and ultimately helps company leaders double their efforts, saving time and money. So as you can see when you hopped on, this is a Zoom webinar. Don't worry, we can't see or hear you, but we do want you to contribute to today, uh, today during and after the discussion. So uh, let us know via email what topics you want to learn more about by following up today, today's discussion. We are a feedback company after all. So first, take a look at your menu bar and set the chat feature to all panelists and attendees and use the chat or Q&A features to ask questions. In the meantime, I want you to join in now and introduce yourself. Uh, in the chat, give us your first name and where you're listening in from today's discussion. I'll start. I'm Katie, and I'm in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Thanks so much, Ryan. Awesome. So for today's webinar, here's our agenda. First, we're going to talk about what it means to scale your work and then how to do that with your recruiting efforts. We'll also talk about how a referral culture begins in orientation, and we'll discuss how feedback services like WorkHound work well with referral services like Rocket CDL. And then finally, we'll talk about where to find and tell good stories about the cultural experience your company has to offer. So before we get into the discussion, I want to get started by talking about what scalability is. Um, so first, let's talk about what that means. Um, well, the definition, the definition of scale by our standards and by industry standards is profitable repeatability. This is about understanding the cost of inefficiencies and the benefits of creating a better, more efficient and cost effective system in order to achieve your goals. For example, we know that the cost to replace a driver across the industry is more or less five to $8,000 per driver. That means if you need to replace 50% of your drivers a year and you by chance work for a company with say 500 drivers, that's a total of 250 drivers to replace, which means on the low end, if we're doing our math, your cost to replace your churn drivers at just a 50% turnover is $1.75 million. With the mindset to scale, you could take a look at that annual sunken cost and then flip it on its head and look at all the things your company can do with an additional 
uh, 1.75 million if it weren't being spent on replacing drivers. I'm not suggesting that we're not replacing them. What I'm saying is that uh, this cost to replace might be preventing um, uh, this might be preventing uh, you from achieving other things with those dollars. And so it might be about um, not uh, by adding the expense for uh, building a culture that in the first place that helps you retain your drivers and then also attract more because of the referrals as a result of a positive culture. Um, so in the context of today's discussion, profitable repeatability is about looking at the areas of your business that can make the most impact in your company's recruiting costs so that you can identify a system of procedures that work well at scale to stretch your company's budget and ultimately retain and recruit more drivers. Does that make sense? Yes. Copy. So uh, I'm going to get right to it and open up this topic for a discussion, and I want to hear from the audience as well. Uh, so make sure your chat function is sent to both the audience and panelists and let us know what you think. How do referrals help recruiters scale the work they're doing? In other words, how does a referral program make the work you're doing more efficient for your budget and workload? Um, let's start with Kennedy. Sure. Um, so a large part of my job is evaluating advertising sources and seeing which are most efficient for us. And so, of course, an online source, um, an internal campaign like through Facebook, but then also referrals count as sources. And so whenever you're looking at things like an app to hire ratio or the quality of leads, we consistently see our referral program um, having far achieving our goals, honestly, of those metrics. And so whenever we're looking at conversion rate, or the likelihood of that driver being qualified, it's far higher than some other sources that we work with and quite honestly spend more money towards. And so that's where we really leverage our referral program and really you know, assign some champions to it um, because it saves the recruiter time. Um, whenever they're qualifying people, we all know that quality can be a challenge. And so whenever we have the opportunity to push some more qualified leads into the system, we're definitely going to try to capitalize on that. That's great. Yeah. I know this has been important for you all. Um, and go ahead, Bobby. I was just going to say um, it's absolutely looking at app to hire ratio is extremely important. And I can tell you from working at Melton and working with other companies that um, are our clients now at Rocket CDL, um, we're hiring or they're hiring like between one and three to maybe one and 15 whenever it comes to referrals, as opposed to, you know, much, much higher um, ratios with online sources and other things that aren't necessarily as personal as um, of a recruiting tool. And so um, absolutely looking at those. Another thing is, is that um, what's great about referral programs is you can absolutely choose um, what is best for your budget and your needs right now and always adapt your referral program to that. So it gives you a lot more flexibility that you might not have with um, job boards or other um, methods that you may be locked in a contract or may not have as much um, internal flexibility on. That's a really great answer. And I think it, it helps speak to um, that possibility that like we know that there are a lot of balls in the air for all recruiters and all retention experts in this industry. And so um, what that's helping you do is understand like here are the folks that need that are top of the line, most uh, highest priority. Um, I did see a couple of questions come in here. Most, we'll, we'll take uh, time at the end for Q&A, uh, but I did want to answer a couple that were relative to the information we've shared already. I know I saw that Lynn asked, what size company were those numbers for? Um, do you want to be clear that that was a hypothetical company, um, but it's a real example based off the cost to replace a driver if, um, or cost to replace a $5,000 per driver with a hypothetical 50% turnover. We know that those numbers vary across the industry, but um, when we're thinking about scalability and the cost to replace and the cost of turnover, uh, it's, it's pretty astronomical, right? We even all the time, we're like, whoa, that's a lot of money. Um, so great questions. I'll uh, make sure to set aside time at the end for some of these others. Um, let's move on and talk about recruiting data. So thank you both for sharing. Um, really already excited about the discussion you're, you're having today. So let's talk about why positive reviews are so important and it's relevant here to referrals, right? We know that happy drivers are our best recruiters. So positive reviews make 94% um, of people more likely to use or join a business. 
Uh, 79% of people trust online reviews as much as recommendations from friends and family. Um, and I, you know, if we think about it, I know even um, speaking with you, Bobby and Kennedy, when we talked about referring even items or shopping for that you both trust each other's recommendation quite a bit. So um, it's similar to shopping or it's similar to hunting for a job. I'm sorry. Um, that if we're looking for a job that we're, we can find reviews on uh, many websites publicly, right? Uh, including Glassdoor and Indeed. And for drivers, that also includes sites like Google Reviews and Facebook. So uh, when we're having conversations with possible new recruits or even current drivers, it's important to think about what's in it for them. For example, in the context of recruiting, positive driver reviews are a reflection of a positive culture, and this can help new drivers understand what your company has to offer them. Similarly, when asking current drivers for referrals, it's important to understand that their credibility is on the line. So having a positive culture can be reflective also of their ability to make great decisions. So let's talk about it. How can a feedback and referral culture build loyalty and professional growth? Um, Bobby, how about you? Sure. Get started. I know this is what you talk and think about all day. Yeah. So um, from my perspective, and I think every driver's perspective, um, communication is key. And they want to feel like they're being heard, that they're being listened to, and that decisions are being um, made based on their valuable feedback. And so, you know, as long as you're telling your drivers the good, the bad, and the ugly so that they can prepare um, for what's ahead, that's always going to put you and the driver in a better space. Um, so it's all about listening and communicating um, and creating that feedback loop. Yeah, for sure. To piggyback off of that, I'm even starting from day one in orientation, we're informing our drivers about our referral program and also of the good, the bad, and the ugly. And so they have clear expectations of what their job is going to be like and what Melton's reputation is like, quite frankly. Um, having a positive reputation is huge in building that loyalty because not only are they hearing that from us, they're hearing it from other drivers as well. Um, which opens up professional growth opportunities for them. I know here at Melton specifically, um, they can visit their CDL schools and be a part of a program we have called the Road Dogs. And so they can be a road recruiter. They don't necessarily have to go to their CDL school. Um, and then they could also be an influencer for us so they can post media out online, videos on YouTube and be incentivized to post even more um, through our social media team. I love that. Um, I know that Bobby shared an example of a driver who uh, who generally uses all of their social media for uh, influencing. And I think that's so fascinating. We're in that day and age. Um, I know from our perspective and what we or our perspective and what we see in uh, in drive, driver feedback is that you know, offering that channel for feedback and then taking action on it gives drivers some skin in the game. You know, it's their investment into the work that the company is doing. Um, and when we've invested in something, we want to see it go well. And so um, I think it's a, it's a really sweet thing to see you, you both using this kind of, um, you know, using referrals, using opportunities to communicate as ways to build loyalty and grow the professionals at your company. Um, so kind of on the flip side, uh, that was more about how, you know, what the driver experience is like, but let's talk about the recruiter side. So how are referrals changing the way recruiting and retention work? I'll start, I guess. The main difference for us is that, you know, that you're no longer seeing the traditional conversations as much at truck stops, you know, going up to somebody's truck and knocking on the door might not be quite as common. And so on our side at, at a carrier, we're seeing a lot more media being developed to kind of talk more about um, videos and things online. We have drivers that will use their Rocket CDL referral link in their videos and just make referral bonuses on videos that they're already doing, you know, what to expect in orientation, how to tarp a load, um, you know, my first load with Melton are common things that we see from drivers coming out of orientation. And so having that structure and having that influence online has been really important. And so I would really encourage um, companies that have drivers that are active on social media to connect with them and kind of further influence their presence online, because I really think that's the future of referrals and recruiting. Um, I think it's going to be much more media-based than, than it ever has been. 
Yeah, um, I will definitely um, second that. You know, I think that for even several years before I started working at Rocket CDL, we were seeing drivers kind of moving to a more um, personalized channel um, to look for their next job. And so they really want um, a recruiting experience that's really hands-on um, and really open and honest. And especially in such um, uncertain times like we've seen over the past year, they want to make sure that they're making the right decision for their family and that you know they're using every avenue to determine if this is the right move. And so you know, giving them somebody like your driver um, that they meet out on the road or maybe that they see their videos on social media. That's just another way for them to say, yeah, this is definitely the move. And it also gives them a lifeline, um, not only when they're making the process, but whenever they're actively driving for your company as well. You have a built-in mentor um, with the driver that referred them that they can reach out, ask questions to see if something um, may be right or isn't right and they need to follow up with. You know, It just gives them another resource that they can feel more secure in their position. I think that's wonderful. I know that, you know, even mentioning over the last couple of years, the way the way the world has changed, it, it really means a lot to have, um, you know, a friend or someone that's trusted in the community with you. And, um, you know, A, if they really like their company and they've found, uh, you know, a sense of belonging community there, that's great. B, if they're able to refer their friends and family to join them at work, like even better, how cool they get to spend this unique experience with people they know really well. Um, okay, cool. So uh, I want to move on and talk a little bit. We've talked a little bit about training. Um, I know that Melton, as you just mentioned, Kennedy, you, you do spend a lot of time training up those driver ambassadors um, and developing them in the orientation process. Um, and this, as you mentioned, starts with quality and effectiveness and training. Uh, this is important and it's really great news to hear because what I'm sharing here in this table is actually from our latest WorkHound Driver Feedback Trends Report. In 2021, we discovered that nearly 50% of all drivers across the industry who communicated concerns about training were no longer employed by their company at the end of the year. Um, this is in stark contrast to some more commonly expected comment themes like pay and home time and even benefits in which only 22% of drivers left their company in 2021. I wanted to bring this in the forefront uh, to the forefront here in today's conversation, because while it's possible to train drivers to become ambassadors in the orientation process and necessary, we want to help them understand the talking points and the, the right things to say. We also simply know we also know that simply providing a high quality, effective training experience will already improve their opinion of your company. So I want to bring it back to the discussion here, and I'd like to think about this with two angles in mind. First, through the lens of you know, any average uh, driver who just wants to come do the work and um, might not be comfortable becoming an ambassador, uh, but then also what it means to build an ambassadorship or referral program during training. Uh, so first, why is training important for building a referral program? Um, I can start if you want, Kennedy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you know, drivers come into orientation, well, they come into your recruiting process and they're kind of getting the fire hose treatment. They're taking on a lot of information, trying to make sure that they're making the right decision, which can be a pressure cooker in itself. And then they get into your orientation once they decide they've made the right decision. And again, they're kind of getting the fire hose treatment, being told, um, you know, anything about your company policies, how you guys run loads, anything like that. So they're taking in a lot of information. And it's so important to remember to resell those awesome benefits that you sold the driver in the first place. That's not only going to help with um, making sure that that driver understands his benefits to the fullest and all of the great, you know, retention programs that you have in place, but it's also going to give him the opportunity to talk about those things and remember those things when talking with other drivers. And so making sure that they have a good grasp on and all of their benefits, um, how their pay works, all of that um, is just the first step to making sure that they have everything they need to recruit and refer effectively. Yeah, I'd say making our company information accessible and specific, no questions asked has been very helpful for us. We have a team, gosh, I would say of five or six folks who are re really involved in our referral program here, most of them being in our field recruiting or recruiting departments. And so they're always available for the driver to train with them, give mock presentations with them, um, give them recruiting tips, um, especially our field recruiters who go to CDL schools regularly are able to provide some really top-notch training to those drivers. 
Um, and so welcoming calls to those folks and just knowing that they have a resource if they do want to explore those programs um, is incredibly important. Just having somebody to champion that program and really make sure that they have the resources that they need if they want to learn that new skill. That's great. Um, I, I think that's, I just, I wanna just reinforce that and how cool it is that you do put in the extra effort to train those ambassadors, especially um, as we see often, like even when when we're working with new companies and, and identifying the, the folks in the company that have the strongest voice, um, you know, maybe who are considered the ambassadors internally anyway. And for a lot of times, those are just drivers that happen to be uh, very zealous about their experience. But there also might be a lot of other drivers on your team that are on your, at your company that are just as excited, but they don't know how to do something about it. Or they don't know the right thing to say. And so giving them those talking points, talking with them about, um, you know, what new drivers can experience is, is super crucial. So uh, speaking of which, uh, I want to talk about how to introduce ambassadorship into your training program. So uh, first off, make sure your training program is top notch. Um, if your regular baseline training program isn't quite put together, it can, um, it, it might not make the most impact if you want to throw in, uh, here's how to become an ambassador if drivers are already confused about their place at your company. Uh, so first start with your base, your baseline training, make sure it's great, and then um, add those layers of ambassadorship on top. Uh, let your culture demonstrate with evidence why drivers can give a credible referral. So um, oftentimes we hear things, or even if, if any of you all have um, seen job descriptions or what companies are advertising as their culture, it's often about a feeling or, um, the opportunity to be part of our family. And um, that's great. And I, I wouldn't dispute that. But what really helps in earning that trust and offering a credible referral is specific ways your company is helping. So um, letting them know that you track feedback, that you've simplified your pay structure, or that you offer this like uh, five-step program toward professional development. Those are all ways that are going to help um, offer tangible evidence of what's so great about where you work. Um, also create clear, concise messaging for drivers. I know we just talked about that, but, um, sometimes that's, they've signed up to become drivers, not spokespeople. So, um, look for ways to help equip them with, you know, what, what really is so great about your company. Um, and then set an expectation for a follow-up. There's nothing worse than like when someone comes to a recruiter and says, Hey, I just referred my brother, my friend, my cousin, and, uh, and then and then they never hear from them. And so uh, let that driver know if they come to you with a referral, uh, when you're gonna follow up, when the opportunity is open so that you can uh, set everyone up for success. And I feel a little bit like I'm speaking out of turn here. I know that Bobby and Kennedy, this is your area of expertise. So is there anything else you'd like to add here from your experiences getting these uh, referral programs off the ground? I would like to add to, Bobby knew this when she was at Melton, um, Honestly, I knew it before we adopted Rocket CDL, so this is a kudos to them, but having the driver um, track their referral whenever it's submitted is very crucial. If your recruiters are doing um, manual work, giving those drivers updates, um, it might not be the most efficient use of your time, of course, and then also it's not optimizing your referral program. So I'll have to say um, tracking that on the driver's side has been game changing for us in um, has cut down on the amount of work, um, manual work on our referral program side as well. Yeah, um, just a second that. I would say communication is probably the most important part of our product at Rocket CDL and just for any referral program in general. I think that in order to keep drivers engaged and excited, they need to know that you take their referral seriously and that you are you know, doing the work to try to onboard that driver or to make sure that they want the job. And so even if you don't have a product like ours to help stream that, streamline that for you, I would encourage encourage you to have your recruiters follow up with those drivers that are sending them referrals. That's just going to improve your relationship with that driver on a personal level. You know, that might expose some things as they're having conversations with recruiters that might be a concern that you can adjust for. Um, you know, it just gives you more information about the driver and in turn gives the driver more information um, about your program. So I would say absolutely communication um, is the key to making your referral program successful. And um, to kind of piggyback off of that. One other thing that I'd like to bring up is that um, 
ask for referrals early and often. If you have the capacity in your recruiting department to ask for a referral whenever you've kind of sealed the deal with the driver, I would do it. Um, ask for referrals and orientation. You don't know those guys that have just come from another company where other drivers might be in a bad space, or maybe they just got out of CDL school and know a bunch of guys um, that are looking for a position as well. So there are lots of opportunities for ask for referrals along the way. That's a really great tip. I think um, it, it it makes me think of sales, like just being in sales. Sometimes it's just hard to ask for what you what you're looking for. It's hard to ask for the clothes and uh, referrals are very similar in that it can feel a little bit. It's easy to feel timid in that moment because they could the answer could be I don't have any, um, but that's okay. That's a completely valid answer and it didn't you know it didn't hurt to ask. Um, so, uh, but this is great because I think everything you just touched on is. Um, is really what it's a great start to the next question. So our next discussion topic is really about that, about what needs to happen in your company's culture in order to receive referrals. So with us, um, again, starting from the very beginning from conversations with the recruiter, um, but then also we give a formal presentation and orientation, asking for referrals, getting them onboarded to the Rocket CDL app and getting them familiar with our entire referral program. And so having that recruiter and orientation, I think has made a big difference, but then also ongoing information, as Bobby mentioned, it's water out of a fire hose and orientation. And so um, Rocket CDL and of course our efforts um, with ongoing communications has really helped bolster our referral program as well. And so having that from the beginning and ongoing um, has really helped us. And then just having the, our company reputation online and receiving referrals through that avenue has really helped. Um, I would say going into an orientation, 70, 80% of the drivers that join us said, one of the reasons I did is because of your positive online presence. And so having that out there and building that culture before they're even in the seat and orientation helps um, receive referrals and then throughout their tenure as well. That's yeah. great. And you also all do a really great job taking action on driver feedback too. Um, yes, I know that yeah. we get a lot of positive feedback from your drivers about the work you're doing. Yes. Yeah, for sure. And just putting yourself honestly in the driver's shoes helps a lot. I mean, you kind of have to check yourself sometimes. Are we building a culture where we want people to refer or people, you know, actively referring people because if they're not enjoying their jobs themselves, then that's an obvious sign of low referrals. And so it's a good sign for us. Um, our driver services team does an excellent job with WorkHound and acting on feedback. And obviously that shows in the amount of referrals and the success that we see through that. Yeah. Um, I would say, um, and this is just kind of from general experience with our customers recently, and even just people that we talk to in general, a lot of times companies have referral programs, but they don't um, communicate them. Uh, the drivers just are totally unaware of them. And so, um, again, coming back to communication, I think just telling your drivers about it, making sure that they're aware of it, putting it everywhere that you can so that no matter what way they choose to absorb information, they get that. Um, I think that that's probably one of the first steps to, um, you know, receiving referrals. It sounds simple, but sometimes, you know, it it's harder than it seems when you talk about all of the avenues that you try need to try to push that information out to. Um, so that always seems to be the most important first step um, for us and any of our clients. Yeah, that's a that's a really great note. That's often what we talk about with any kind of benefits. Mm -hmm. That it's the same thing. You're learning about your benefits in those first couple of days on the job, and when you're drinking out of the fire hose, and then and then life goes on, and you don't often need those benefits until you need them, right? Like health insurance or like the additional. Um, nuances that come with your company's benefits programs. And so uh, reminding those, uh, looking for if you have an intranet or other means of communication with your entire fleet, reminding them of those benefits and perks you have to offer really um, is worthwhile. Uh, great. So um, you both have talked, we've talked about this a lot, that communication matters, that people matter, um, that in order to, to achieve referrals, we have to talk about um, more ways to communicate. So 
Um, what we saw in our data from last, uh, from 2021 in the, the annual trends report is that about half of all praise feedback is about people. We know the old saying goes that people don't leave bad jobs, they leave bad bosses. And the same is true for the opposite. We also know that drivers stay because of good people. In this theme, drivers discuss mostly their appreciation that someone in the office had their back. Um, this is good for a lot of reasons, but mostly because of trust. So this is a really critical component to recruiting and referrals. Um, you all know this, but if we're thinking about recruiting as a sales process, um, we know that, and I actually know one person on this uh, call once told me that uh, retention is MRR for recruiters. Um, so if we're thinking about uh, how recruiting is a, somewhat of a sales process, it is certainly an ongoing relationship. We know that our most satisfied customers talk about their satisfaction with their peers. And the same goes for happy drivers. If they're satisfied, they'll have no problem sharing their experience with their driver peers. So positive feedback and referrals can alleviate the strain and additional steps that recruiters have to take to earn um, and establish trust because a job change is, we know, an important and potentially stressful life decision. Um, if drivers already have a positive attitude because word of mouth, say from someone they already really trust, um, then this can help ex expedite the work you're doing. So recruiting efforts can then become an inbound, highly qualified process rather than um, completely outbound cold calling, which um, we know takes a lot of time and resources from your day. Uh, before I move on, do you all have anything to add about trust? I, I can say in a time where, you know, there's crazy ads out there from other companies, um, <laughs> At Melton, we we always, of course, keep things very truthful in our ads, and um, you want that to translate to your recruiters from online presence to recruiter conversations to orientation, because that builds a clear expectation for the driver when he refer, refers folks um, in the future. You don't want different messages out there, of course, but um, even some inflammatory titles can lead the wrong way whenever you're talking about referral programs. So just keeping that in mind, that's really helped us, um, of course, keeping messages consistent. Yeah, absolutely. I would say that's also an important part of communication is making sure that you're all aligned internally, um, whether that's by having, you know, quarterly meetings with your ops and safety departments to make sure that you're all on the same page, or maybe get some frequently asked questions that you hear from drivers answered for your recruiters. Um, I would just make sure that, you know, you all it's kind of like mom and dad, make sure mom and dad are all on the same page so that you don't get, um, the drivers don't get different stories when they make it on, um, when they're onboarding, um, because then, you know, that could seed some distrust in what's happening and nobody wants that. So I would just say, make sure that you're aligned internally. Um, and just remember that you are creating a community with your drivers every time that you're asking for referrals or have a personal interaction with him. Um, so just make sure that, you know, you're putting your best foot forward for them um, and for the company at all times. That's great. We hear it so often that a driver had one experience in recruiting and then suddenly they've signed on for a different job. Um, great. So a little bit more, a little bit more about trust. Um, we all know trust is earned, not given. It's important to reinforce this wherever possible. So first, listen to drivers. In sales, um, even in recruiting, we often talk about the 80-20 rule. And that means as a salesperson or recruiter, my prospect should be seek, speaking 80% of the time reserving only 20% for myself. This is a great rule to apply here, even for drivers, because if you give them the space to speak, you can go further in earning their trust. And as they share, listen for stories about the driver or their fellow drivers going above and beyond. Um, in these conversations, you also could ask for feedback. Make sure they know they can, they can honestly, authentically share the good, bad, and the ugly. And when they share opportunities for improvement, take action. That's a gold mine. Um, and the second step I want to share for today's very quick trust les lesson is about advocating for drivers. Um, amplify the good. This applies to both stories about your company and their positive feedback. And then um, on the flip side, work on the bad. And when you get an opportunity to make a change because of their feedback, give drivers the credit for their perspective and expertise. Um, 
And then finally, we know trust is a feeling, right? Um, but it, and that it's not exactly transactional. But if we think about it psychologically and ways that we can earn it, um, then let's spend a moment talking about how to recover and earn trust. So if you've been turn, tuning into WorkHound webinars for a while, you might have uh, learned that earning trust is about a system of making promises and following through on promises. So for WorkHound, this is illustrated by the feedback loop. You can use any sort of system that makes sense for you um, as far as the sort of trust earning reinforcement. So what this, uh, what this graphic means is that um, companies we work with are earning driver trust by letting drivers know they want feedback for change. And then, um, so I'll demonstrate, they're wanting feedback for change. And then they use that um, feedback to look for exa specific examples of how to change. And then they take action. And then they credit the drivers uh, by reinforcing that their insight matters. So you can see that here, feedback, insight, action. And, and altogether, that represents culture. Um, this is a repeatable habit and it can become a social norm at, at an organization. So if we come back to the original part of this discussion, um, the habits are repeatable and repeatable actions become culture, um, ultimately helping you scale the work you're doing. Um, the beauty in this is that once you instill good habits and develop a strong positive culture, your company's referrals and positive reviews are an inevitable result. As I often say, control what you can control. Gaining more insight and making change happen are elements of, work, of our work that can be controlled. And ultimately this will result in scaling the work you do. So now, thank you all for your patience. We'd like to open it up for Q and A. And I know we have some questions already, but in the meantime, please feel free to lean on that chat feature or the Q and A button and let us know the questions you'd like for our panelists today to discuss. So um, one, of, uh, one of our attendees has asked, how do you incentivize social sharing? So Kennedy, you were talking earlier about um, getting your drivers involved in uh, you know, a social media influencer program or looking for ways to get those ambassadorship talking points out there and uh, the social and, and social media. Um, how do you incentivize that type of practice? Yeah, so I guess you could do it both monetarily and, you know, without a pay structure, honestly, um, just resharing their videos on your social channels on your main company social channels is something that you can do that doesn't cost anything. Um, and just amplifying their videos any chance you get the way that we incentivize it here is um, we base it off of um, an engagement goal that we would like them to reach and so based on uh, it's not unattainable by any means it's very achievable for the driver and so setting a goal for them to get a certain amount of engagement has helped us incentivize it because overall it benefits the person po posting it it benefits melton um, and so on both ends that's how we structure it and then there's also just a base um, incentive for them to make more videos each month um, I can talk about that a little bit as well, um, just from a product perspective. So at Rocket CDL, if you use our product, um, drivers have the ability to share a unique referral link. And so they can use that to garner more referrals. And then that way they can just drop that link in any description, whether it's on Facebook, TikTok, anything like that. You know, if they're showing a day in the life video and somebody might be interested in that, um, at that point, all that driver has to do is click the link and submit their information through a simple form. Um, and we track that referral for that driver and it gets attributed to that driver. So that's just a way that um, we've kind of elevated uh, Melton and other people's ability to, to track that. That's great. I'm looking in here. Um, that's super helpful. I know um, you shared a little while back that you had you have some drivers using Rocket CDL that have um, sort of made their own uh, side hustle, if you will, out of yeah. it. Would you talk a little bit about that and share? Um, what that looks like for some of those drivers? Yeah, absolutely. So we have some really fantastic examples um, with our current clients. Um, it just depends. And what's great is that, you know, this can be for any level of interest for referring for any driver, you know, they can kind of make their own way. So we have companies that are, or I'm sorry, drivers that are doing anything from very entrepreneurial things where like creating their own pay-per-click campaign and using that unique referral link in it um, to drum up referrals for themselves. Um, if you 
that's particularly interesting for people who um, give individual referral incentives. So if you're paying per referral, um, you know, that's something that would encourage drivers to go the extra mile to post that information. Um, you, they can also involve their spouse. All you have to do is, you know, have that link. If you have, you know, a wife writer or somebody that's at home and doesn't necessarily um, have like a full-time gig and they're online and they just like to do that stuff, they can post their um, spouse's referral link that they can refer through. Um, it's really just about kind of reaching out whichever method is most comfortable for the driver. Um, we also have people that go to their own CDL schools, like Kennedy was talking about their road dogs program. Um, you know, if somebody's interested in visiting their CDL school, just make sure you give them the, the stuff that they need to be successful there. So if they need a pop-up banner or maybe a new shirt, maybe, you know, they've gotten dirty out on the road, make sure you give them the stuff that they need um, to give those referrals to you. And a lot of drivers, they use the Rocket CDL app and just pass around um, a tablet in the classroom and collect all that information and it goes straight into um, a recruiter's queue in your ATS. So there's um, just a lot of ways that you can slice and dice and have an effective referral program and it not be a one size fits all. I love that because the cost of doing something like that is really not very much at all. Like the cost yeah. of, you know, finding a banner, especially when we think about the cost to replace a driver or even like the cost per lead. Um, so there are a lot of ways to get creative. And I think oftentimes people start to crunch the numbers and, and think like, oh, I'm going to have to spend money on this thing. But the truth is we're, the industry is already spending a lot of money on, on the cost to replace drivers. So um, there are some areas that are just kind of worth it if we're going to be able to build stronger relationships with drivers and fellow drivers. Yeah. And it makes them feel so valued. If somebody's going to go out of their way to make sure that they have everything that they they need, that's not like their mm -hmm. everyday driving job. And that makes them feel special and appreciated. And it's all about appreciation for drivers. So that's great. Um, now I see a question here. It looks like it's actually a conversation between two of the attendees, but I am curious, especially Kennedy with your experience being in digital media. Um, so Ryan and Jim are chatting in, hi Ryan and Jim, um, they're chatting here <laughs> in the comments about um, what each are doing for their own recruiting process. Um, and I'm curious, Kennedy, um, if you, and you don't have to give away your secret sauce, but <laughs> Um, are you doing anything unique these days in social media um, as far as attracting more drivers or recruiting more drivers online? Yeah, so um, touched on it a little bit already, but really uh, getting something along the lines of influencers or encouraging more videos has been pretty substantial for us. Um, we even have recruiters that say, you know, if you need more information about Melton and not necessarily from them on the phone, look us up on YouTube, look us up online for our online reviews. Um, so that's something that has really elevated our online presence and really um, on the recruiting side of things has helped a lot. Um, but then I would also just celebrate drivers as much as you can. That's a big content strategy that has helped. And it's not necessarily, hey, come work for Melton or a big sales pitch every post. It doesn't need to be that at all. Um, but recognizing their efforts, whether it be something super hero heroic or just an everyday kind gesture has really helped us. Um, you know, when they reach milestones at your company, or um, they give a great testimonial or something like that, make sure to post about it and celebrate it. Those are our best performing posts. And honestly, I I'm sure we've gotten hires off of it um, just as a regular recruiting ad. And so it doesn't need to be, you know, hey, come work for Melton. Um, telling a good story and really conveying your culture through celebration of drivers has helped us tremendously. That's great. In storytelling, um, it's a concept we talk about because, you know, I come from content. Um, the concept we talk about is showing versus telling. And uh, you can you can do so much, you can illustrate the experience you provide so much better if you're able to show that in your content as you do rather than just talking about it. Um, Great. Well, I appreciate you all for your time today. Um, and same with everyone else who's, attend who's attending this discussion. It means a lot for us. We know that you're busy folks out there. So um, if you have any additional questions, I'm going to share our contact information here. Always feel free to follow up. Uh, we have, you know, a wealth of information among these three folks. If, and if I don't have the right information, I'll send it to the right person who does. 
Um, so thank you again for all of your time today and participation in this discussion and special thank you to Kennedy and the Milton team, as well as Bobby and our friends over at Rocket CDL. I hope you all came away with some new tools for your recruiting and retention and referral toolbox. Um, once again, if we didn't get around to answering your questions today, please uh, feel free to reach out to us here. Um, additionally, look forward to uh, work our next WorkHound webinar in March will be how to be a best fleet. That'll be with our friends over at Carrier's Edge um, talking about the best fleets to drive for program. So thanks again, everyone. Go out and do something positive. Thank you, guys. Have a great Thank day. Thank you.